With us now from Norwich is Bridget Harris, one of the women who complained about Lord Renard. Also here is Lord Greaves, a senior Lib Dem member of the House of Lords. We asked for someone to speak on behalf of the Lib Dem leadership, but it took them nine hours and at the end of that time they were unable to offer us anyone. Uh, now, Bridget Harris, uh, Lord Renard says he can't issue an apology because of fears that you or others might sue. Would you sue? Um, well, obviously I can't, I can't really answer that question because it clearly depends on all the circumstances, well, doesn't yes, it? Well, yes, can. you can. If he said sorry, would you sue? What I can say is I'm, I'm quite happy to accept on a personal level um, his apology if he's willing to take responsibility for his actions. But, but you but will the accept absence, that he, he can't say sorry because it's admitting something for which you, you say or you imply clearly might sue him. Well, of course. I mean, there we are. I mean, that, that is the conundrum that we face. We've never actually had a proper disciplinary procedure or investigation that's actually been able to question or investigate or indeed even cross-examine the evidence that both myself and the other women and also Lord Renard has put forward. All we've had is investigations which have found them to be credible, have found that what myself and the other women have said is believable. Um, and in fact, nobody else, nobody over the last 11 months has questioned anything that we've said. But the problem is, is the Lib Dems manifestly failed over, over a period of 10 10 years to actually investigate these, these, these allegations and, and complaints in the way that any other normal organisation or workplace discrimination sort of procedure would have done. Okay, now Lord Greaves, how much damage is this doing to the party? Oh, it's doing a lot of damage and it's getting worse by the day. Um, it was bad enough yesterday, it, uh, it's got worse with everything that's happened today and quite frankly the party has got to take action to stop it getting worse and then to start it getting better. It's we tried to do that by telling Lord Renard he should apologise. Well, the problem is, I mean, I don't want to go into the details of all that, which have been analysed hugely in the, in the media, but the real problem, I think, is, is, is that the leadership of the party, broadly defined, not just Nick Clegg, have taken action which actually has rebounded and made matters worse. That's and incompetent leadership then? I think the advice that they've been getting, I mean, for example, um, when the report was first issued, it was obviously there had to be a news management strategy by people in the party because it was a difficult issue. And that should have been a joint strategy between the leadership and Lord Renard. Failed hopelessly to do that. And everything that's happened has created more stress in the party, more uproar in different parts of the party. So what we've now got is two different factions, if you like, in the party, different groups of people who are approaching this from completely different angles and who increasingly are falling out with each other. They're simply chucking missiles at each other and now we're being told that Lord Renard may be taking legal action, Bridget Harris says she may be taking legal action. I mean, this is a nightmare. The decision today to suspend Lord Renard and, and have a new disciplinary procedure is likely to take several months. So there's a whole series of time bombs being laid for the future where legal action, legal action, a new inquiry that will report perhaps a few weeks or very soon before the next round of elections. It is nonsense. And what the party really has to do now is to get a grip on this and set up a reconciliation and mediation system to bring the two sides together, start them talking and work towards whatever levels of agreement can be reached That's by very, consent uh, of each Lib other. Dem solution. No, no, it's it? not a Lib Dem solution at all. It's what ha I mean, on a much grander scale, a much more important scale, it happened in South Africa. It got, oh, it, it, it got Ian Paisley in government with former field commanders of the IRA. That kind of process. And I'm afraid, on a much smaller scale, in a relatively small political party in this country, that is the process Bridget, that, that now has to take Bridget place. Let me ask Bridget Harris. Bridget Harris, do you worry about the damage this is doing to your party? Well, um, well, yes, obviously, in, in many ways, but I think that that's, one, that's, ob that's been one of the core problems. I mean, the way that Lord Grief described it, I think that the, the, the colloquial um, expression would be, we don't wash our dirty linen in public, because as he has rightly ex has said, it causes a lot of damage. It's absolutely horrible to see all of this infighting. Why don't we all just shut up and deal with it behind closed doors? But that is the very um, tactic that they took over 10 years to try to deal with it. They tried to deal with the allegations that the women were making behind closed doors 
doors through informal processes, trying to get everybody to sort of informally and quietly and privately say sorry and work it all out between them um, and to find some redress. The consequence of that was nobody in the party actually in, in, in recent times were aware of the fact that these allegations surrounded Lord Renard. And so he was becoming um, sort of more and more involved again in the party in, in terms of being invited to gender balance candidate weekends and that kind of thing. And that was what was worrying the women. And that's the symptom of when you actually don't deal with the process according to fair right. and straightforward well, the rules. The problem is this is all the past. And we can argue about the past over 10 years. We can argue about the past over the, year, the past year. We can argue about the last few days. The problem is we are where we are now and the party is in a dreadful state. And therefore we've got to take it from where we are now and set up a process which would be inclusive, which would be completely inclusive. But where the different people and the different sides of the party start to work together again. We are all supposed to be liberals, liberal democrats. Can I just, can I just make moment, a point on that? At the moment, increasingly, we're all falling out with the people who are supposed to be our colleagues right. and our comrades in arms. Just engage with that, Bridget Harris. Yes, of course, I would like to, absolutely directly. Um, we're not all friends and colleagues when actually one of us is accused of sexual harassment. That is something where myself and other women are perfectly entitled yeah, yeah, to yeah, take yeah. forward complaints. I don't see any you're... reason why party loyalty should come into it. I'm perfectly loyal to the Lib Dems and the policies and Nick Clegg and the coalition government. I'm perfectly loyal to the, co the Liberal cause. What I don't see any reason why I'm responsible responsible for or loyal to is when somebody um, absolutely inappropriately um, uh, uh, tries to take advantage yeah, of their power but, position, but, 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 nor do I believe that that's fair for any other woman. And the Bridget, question really see, is... We've, we've heard you say this so many times. We mm. understand what you are saying. We understand the arguments, but we are where we are. Now, I'm not talking about uh, Lord Renard particularly. I'm talking about the fact that people I have worked with and campaigned with for well, up to the last 50 years, but more recently perhaps, are falling out in droves and are getting very angry with each other mm -hmm. in a way which, unless it is solved and sorted out, which will take some time, but unless it is sorted out, it is going to produce fault lines and schisms in the party which will last for years. Right. Well, I'm Thank sorry you both very much indeed. I'm going to have to cut you off there. Thank you very much.